Today we discuss the invertebrate phyla. In the MSET examination, the minimum weightage of invertebrate phyla is 4 marks. Regarding the invertebrate phyla, the first one is protozoa. Now, what are the characters of the protozoa and how it is classified? As we observe the protozoa, the important character of protozoa is unicellular nature. What is meant by unicellular nature? The body is made by one cell. What is the other name of unicellular organisms? Acellular organisms. Here in the protozoa, the body is made by how many cells? One cell. That one cell performs all activities. Now, what is the taxonomic position of protozoa? The taxonomic position of protozoa is phylum. The protozoa come under which kingdom? The protista. As we observe the remaining characters of protozoa, in the protozoa, the locomotion is brought by what type of organelle? One we call it as pseudopodia. The second one is flagella. The third one is cilia. And the fourth one is myonemes. Of these, what are the cellular extensions? The pseudopodia. The pseudopodia are purely temporarily structures. In protozoans, what type of nutrition is going to observe? One type of nutrition we call it as holozoic. What is meant by holozoic nutrition? The animal takes the solid food material. Some protozoan animals are said to be holophytic. What is meant by holophytic? The organism prepares its own food material. Some protozoans perform parasitic nutrition. They depend on the host. Some type of protozoans are said to be osmotrophs. Now, what are the other characters of the protozoa? In protozoans, the body is covered and protected by pellicle. In some animals, the body is covered by shell. In some animals, the body is covered by only plasma lemma. As we observe the protozoans, the protozoans are said to be immortal. Why these are called immortal? In the body of protozoans, the protoplasm is not differentiated into somatoplasm and germplasm. Whenever the conditions are unfavorable, the protozoans will undergo a process that we call it as encystement. What is meant by encystement? The development of cyst that we call it as encystement. What is the main significance of encystement? Because of the, signif the significance of encystement is the protozoans get the protection. What about the reproduction performed by the protozoans? Whenever the conditions are all favorable, the protozoans perform what type of reproduction? Asexual reproduction. The asexual reproduction is brought by many methods. One we call it as binary fission. Second one is multiple fission. Third one is sporulation. And the next one is budding. Of these methods, what is the most important method regarding the asexual reproduction? The binary fission. The binary fission may be irregular or the binary fission may be transverse or the binary fission may be longitudinal. Whenever the conditions are favorable, how the protozoans perform reproduction? They reproduce sexually. In order to perform the sexual reproduction, we require two organisms or two pronuclei or two haploid gametes. The sexual reproduction is brought by various methods. One we call it as conjugation. The second one is called autogamy. The third one we call it as endomixis. Whatever it may be the methods regarding the sexual reproduction. What is the most important method performed by the protozoans during the sexual reproduction? That is said to be the conjugation. Now, as we observe the phylum protozoa, such phylum protozoa is classified into four subphyla. Name the person classified the phylum protozoa into four subphyla, Hanigberg. What is the unit for the classification of protozoa? One is locomotory organelle and the second one we call it as nuclei. What is the first subphylum? The first subphylum we call it as sarcomastigophora. What is the second subphylum? Is sporozoa. 
what is the third subphylum that is called nidospora what is the last subphylum that we call it as the ciliophora these are the four subphyla we have to discuss under the phylum protozoa again phylum protozoa is classified into how many subphyla four subphyla who classified phylum protozoa hanigberg what is the first subphylum sarcomastigophora as we observe the sarcomastigophora the sarcomastigophora is classified into three superclasses what is the first superclass we call it as the mastigophora what is the second superclass we call it as opalinata what is the third superclass that we call it as the sarcodyna now we have to discuss the mastigophora what is the other name of mastigophora flagellata why we use the word flagellata majority of mastigophorans perform the locomotion with the help of flagella such mastigophora is classified into two classes one we call it as phytomastigophora and the second one we call it as geomastigophora what is the important character associated here in the class phytomastigophora the important plant character chloroplast present one example for the phytomastigophora is the euglena the second one we call it as volvox what about the geomastigophora in the geomastigophora majority are parasites what is one example for the geomastigophora one is trichomonas and the second one we call it as trichonympha now as we observe the superclass mastigophora in this superclass generally asexual reproduction is by longitudinal binary fission because of the longitudinal binary fission the two daughter individuals are identical with one another such a type of longitudinal binary fission is said to be symmetrogenic now what is the second superclass opalinata what are the examples for the opalinata one example is opalina the second example we call it as gelarella now what are the important characters of opalinata the opalinata included parasites or commensals as we observe the members of opalinata in the opalinata the infraciliary system is absent now we are getting one doubt regarding the infraciliary system what is meant by kinety a longitudinal row of kinetosomes and followed by the kinetodesmata followed by kinetodesmal fibrils again it is repeated what is meant by kinety a longitudinal row of kinetosomes connected by kinetodesmata and kinetodesmal fibrils this is one kinety all kinetics are united to form infraciliary system such a type of infraciliary system is absent in opalinata in some examples two nuclei present called binucleate in some examples multinucleate condition is present whatever it may be the condition of nucleus all are similar so we use a word called homokaryotic now the third superclass we call it as sarcodyna the sarcodyna is classified into three classes one we call it as rhizopodia the second one we call it as actinopodia and the third one we call it as pyroplasmia and now as we observe the rhizopodia what type of animals are included amoebas foraminiferans and mycetogens now we are getting one doubt what are the examples for the mycetogens one example for the mycetogen is physarum and dictyostelium what is the example for the foraminiferan elifidium what is the other name of elifidium the polystomella now the sarcodyna here one class is rhizopodia is over what is the second class that we call it as actinopodia in the actinopodia what type of pseudopodia are present generally axopodia what about the rhizopodia in the rhizopodia mainly what type of pseudopodia are present the lobopodia what are the examples for the actinopodia one example is heliogens one example is radiolarians and the third one we call it as acantheriums 
now what is the last class that we call it as pyroplasmia now regarding the m set what is the popular bit what are the sarcodines are completely parasites they are present in the class pyroplasmia what is the example for the pyroplasmia that is babesia now what is the second subphylum that we call it as sporozoa what is the important character of sporozoa as we observe the sporozoa here what is present the ap complex now what is the meaning of ap complex with the help of ap complex the sporozoan parasites penetrate into the host body now the sporozoa is also called the ap complex in the sporozoa all are parasites such sporozoa is classified into how many classes three classes one we call it as telosporia in the telosporia what is the infective stage the elongated sporozoite what is one example for the telosporia the plasmodium the second one we call it as the toxoplasmia in the toxoplasmia we have to observe asexual reproduction by endodiogeny what is meant by endodiogeny the parent cell converted into two daughter cells what is the example for the toxoplasmia the toxoplasma what is the last class under the sporozoa that we call it as the haplosporidia in the haplosporidia as we observe the spores they are amoeboid in shape what is the best example for the haplosporidia the haplosporidium now what is the third subphylum that we call it as nidospora what is the similarity between sporozoa and nidospora all these are the parasites in the parasites no locomotory organelles generally what type of nutrition is present the parasitic nutrition now this nidospora is classified into how many classes one we call it as mixosporidia and the second one we call it as microsporidia now what is the characteristic feature of nidospora here the parasites having the polar capsule and polar filaments now we are getting one doubt what is the importance of polar capsule and polar filament they help for the attachment of the host body now in the nidospora one class is mixosporidia one example is mixobolus microsporidia one example is nosema notabilis we are having a good idea regarding the nosema notabilis it is the best example for the hyperparasitism nosema is a hyperparasite what is meant by hyperparasite it lives as a parasite on another parasite and now what is the last subphylum that we call it as the ciliophora in the protozoa what is the advanced subphylum that we call it as the ciliophora under the ciliophora how many classes are present only one class is present that we call it as the ciliata what is the difference between opalinata and ciliata in the opalinata infraciliary system is absent what about the ciliata in all ciliate animals infraciliary system is present what is meant by infraciliary system one row of kinetogenes followed by kinetodesmata followed by kinetodesmal fibrils that we call it as infraciliary system it means all kinetics unite to form infraciliary system that is present only in case of ciliates in the opalinata all nuclei are similar homokaryotic whereas in case of ciliophora the nuclei are dissimilar one we call it as macronucleus one we call it as micronucleus the macronucleus controls all vegetative functions except the reproduction if macronucleus is damaged the animal dies immediately what about the micronucleus that is reproductive in function the micronucleus is diploid if micronucleus is damaged in the ciliates what is going to impaired the reproduction will be impaired what are the examples for the ciliata one example is paramecium one example is verticella here in the ciliata what is one exception that we call it as sartoria what is the importance of sartoria 
these are the only protozoans in which the reproduction is by budding in the sartorians only in the young stage what are present the cilia what about the adult stage they are replaced by the tentacles now why these animals got the name sartoria because the tentacles help for the sucking of food materials these are the important points regarding the m set point of view with the reference of the phylum protozoa what is the important character that is unicellular nature now we have to discuss the second phylum we call it as the next one we call it as porifera the next one we call it as porifera and now as we observe the porifera the kingdom animalia is classified into two sub kingdoms the first sub kingdom we call it as parajoa the study of parajoa we call it as the parajoalzi in the sub kingdom parajoa only one phylum is present that we call it as porifera now in the kingdom animalia what is the taxonomic position of porifera the phylum in the kingdom animalia what is the first phylum the porifera the porifera <coughs> now as yes, we observe the porifera what is the important character of porifera that we call it as the canal system what is the other name of canal system the aquiferous system in the kingdom animalia what are the most primitive multicellular animals the porifers and now why these are called the porifers on their body many pores are present so these are called the pore bearers these are the only animals in which what are absent the nerve cells and sensory cells they are totally absent because of the absence of nerve cells and sensory cells there is no coordination and integration among the cells so in the porifera what type of body organization is present the cellular grade of organization and now what are the remaining points of the phylum porifera in the phylum porifera the body wall has two layers the first one we call it as pinacoderm and the second one we call it as coyanoderm in between pinacoderm and coyanoderm what is present the mesohyal is present the mesohyal is a gelatinous substance it has what type of cells called the amebocytes now in the phylum porifera the body is supported by the endoskeleton but it is not a true endoskeleton the endoskeleton is made by the spicules the spicules are made by either calcium carbonate or the spicules are made by sio2 or the spicules are made by the spongin fibers now what is the similarity between the protozoa and porifera in protozoans as well as in porifera what type of digestion is going to observe the intracellular what is meant by intracellular digestion digestion takes place inside the cell that we call it as intracellular here also the animals take solid food material so what type of nutrition the holozoic nutrition the important character of porifera is the canal system what is the other name of canal system aquiferous system what are the functions of canal system one function is the nutrition and the second function is respiration and third function is excretion and fourth function is circulation and fifth function is the cross fertilization and uh, now what is the important point in case of poriferans as we observe the water the water enters into the body because of the action of what type of cells the coyanocytes what is the other name of coyanocytes the collar cells or flagellated cells now as we observe the general body plan of poriferans now this is the body of a poriferan in the body of poriferan a longitudinal body cavity is present such body cavity we call it as the spongocil as we observe the spongocil it opens out through ossiculum 
on the body surface the minute pores are present called the ostea these ostea are more in number whereas osculum is one in number all materials enter into the body with the help of ostea all materials come out through which opening the osculum all sponges in the adult stage are sedentary they do not move what about the larval stages the larvae are free swimming in the larval stages what are the locomotory organelle the flagella as we observe the poriferans here the reproduction is sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction how the asexual reproduction takes place the asexual reproduction is by means of fragmentation or by means of gemmules what is meant by gemmule it is the internal bud what type of sponges perform gemmule reproduction one example is all fresh water sponges and few marine shallow water sponges and now in these sponges a remarkable power of what is present the regeneration what is meant by regeneration to regain the lost parts the regeneration is also followed by the aggregation of cells and now what are the other characters of pilum porifera as we observe the porifera all are bisexual there is no difference of male and the female now what type of fertilization is present the fertilization is cross and internal what is meant by internal takes place inside the body now what about the development the development is indirect what is meant by indirect development in the life history what is present the larvae are present now in poriferans what type of body organization is only present the cellular grade of organization here the tissues the organs the organ systems the coelom everything are absent in the phylum porifera such porifera phylum is classified into three classes what is the unit for the classification of phylum porifera that we call it as spicules phylum porifera is classified into three classes the first class we call it as calcarea and the second class we call it as exactenilida and the third class we call it as demospongia what are the similarities the first class is calcarea in the class calcarea the shallow marine water sponges are present in the calcarea the spicules are made by calcium carbonate what is the larval form of calcarea one is coeloblastula and amphiblastula what is the example for the calcarea one example is leucosolenia and the second one we call it as scypha in the class calcarea all are solitary and some are colonial sponges what about the exactenilida in the exactenilida the spicules are made by sio2 what is the common name of exactenilida called the glass sponges what is the one example for the exactenilida one example is euplectella what is the second example the hyalonema in the exactenilida each spicule has how many rays the six rays now in the exactenilida all are solitary what about the demospongia in the demospongia aquatic sponges are present what about the calcarea all are marine sponges in the exactenilida all are marine sponges in the demospongia fresh water sponges and marine water sponges are present hence we use the word aquatic forms as we observe the demospongia in the demospongia one example we call it as spongilla what is the common name of spongilla fresh water sponge what is the next example the u spongia this is popularly known as the bath sponge another example is chalaina what is the common name of chalaina dead man's finger in the calcarea spicules made by calcium carbonate whereas in exactenilida made by sio2 in demospongia the spicules are made by either sio2 or spongin fibers or both or the totally spicules are absent 
in the calcarea what is the larval form coeblastula and amphiblastula what about the exact nida here the larval form is trichemella here what is the larval form the parent chimula with this the second phylum porifera is over now we have to discuss the third phylum known as the nidaria the third phylum we call it as nidaria and now in the kingdom animalia what is the second sub kingdom eumetazoa in the eumetazoa one grade we call it as radiata why it is called radiata because the radial symmetry is present the radiata is also called diploblastica why it is called diploblastica two germ layers ectoderm endoderm present under radiata only one phylum is present called nidaria previously it is termed as the coelenterata and now under sub kingdom eumetazoa what is the first phylum the nidaria now as we observe the nidaria these are also the multicellular as we observe the sponges the sponges are also multicellular and nidarians are also multicellular but in the nidaria first time what type of cells are developed the nerve cells the sensory cells because of these cells among the cells a coordination and integration present so in the nidaria first time we have to observe the tissue formation what type of body organization present in the nidaria the tissue grade of organization now in the nidaria the development as we observe the development organs organ systems and true coelom all these are absent in the nidaria outer layer we call it as epidermis and the inner layer we call it as endodermis what is the other name of endodermis the gastrodermis between epidermis and endodermis a gelatinous substance is present that we call it as mesoglia here also the mesoglia is said to be cellular or a cellular here the epidermis compared to that of pinacoderm the endodermis is compared to that of coanoderm the mesoglia is compared to that of the mesohyal now in the nidaria what type of nerve cells are present the nerve cells are in the form of net and now how the nerve impulse propagation the nerve cells perform what type of nerve impulse propagation the diffused nerve impulse propagation in all nidarians generally what type of zooids are present the polyp and medusa what is the difference between the polyp and medusa the polyp is sedentary what about the medusa it is a free swimming zooid the polyp is cylindrical in shape the medusa is umbrella in shape only in the medusa to maintain the balance what are present the stratocyst in the medusa we observe the nerving and ganglia the nerving and ganglia first appeared in the phylum nidaria in the nidaria what type of digestion is present one is intracellular one we call it as inter what is meant by intercellular digestion outside the cell inside elementary canal it is also known as extracellular digestion here also the animals take solid food material that we call it as oozoic nutrition in the phylum nidaria the polyp and medusa they undergo alternation of generations that we call it as the metagenesis in some nidarians only one zooid is present that we call it as monomorphism if two zooids are present that we call it as dimorphism if many zooids are present that we call it as polymorphism in the polymorphism one zooid we call it as gonozooid one zooid we call it as gastrozooid one zooid we call it as dactylozooid and now what are the bits regarding these zooids the gonozooid with reference to reproduction 
the gastrojoid with reference to the nutrition, the dactylojoid with reference to production and capture the prey. Now in the nidaria, what type of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction both are present. In the nidaria, what is the characteristic larva, the planula? Here, what are the locomotory organelle in the planula, the cilia? Such phylum nidaria is classified into how many classes? Three classes. What is the unit for the classification of nidaria? That we call it as joids. It is classified into three classes. The first class we call it as hydrojoa and the second class we call it as kyphojoa and the third class we call it as the anthojoa. Now, the first class is hydrojoa. In the hydrojoa, in some examples, polyp present. In some examples, polyp medusa present. In some examples, many joids are present. So, in the class of hydrojoa, we observe polymorphism. What is the significance of polymorphism? Division of labor. What is meant by division of labor? The work is shared by different joids. In the class of hydrojoa, as we observe the medusa, in the body of medusa, what is absent? The velum is absent. That to, the velum is present. That we call it as craspidot medusa. In the class hydrojoa, what type of symmetry is present? The radial symmetry. In the class hydrojoa, as we observe the nidocytes, what is the other name of nidocyte? The stinging cells. What are the functions of stinging cells? They help in the attachment. They help in the locomotion. They help in the food collection. Such nidoblast cells are present only in the epidermis. In the class hydrojoa, the germ cells are also derived from epidermis. It is also called the ectoderm. What is one example for the class hydrojoa? Hydra, obelia, physalia and a halistema. Now the second class we call it as Skyphojoa. What is the common name of Skyphojoa? The jellyfishes. In the Hydrojoa, the animals are present in the marine water. Only Hydra present in the fresh water. But in the Skyphojoa, all the animals are present in the marine water. In the Skyphojoa, what is the main joid? The Medusa. Here, in the class Hydrojoa, the Medusa having velum. That is called craspidot medusa. Whereas in the skyphojoa, in the medusa velum absent, it is called a craspidot medusa. What is the function of velum? That he helps in the movement of an organism. Now in the class skyphojoa, what type of symmetry is present? The radial symmetry. Here also what is present? The polyp. But it is very much reduced. Such reduced polyp we call it as skyphistoma. Such polished uh, polyp by a process called strobilation, it gives rise to a larva that we call it as a fira larva. Now, in the class Skyphojoa, this we call it as mouth. These are oral arms. Number of oral arms are four. The sealant iron is divided into the gastric pouches, followed by radial canals, followed by the circular canals. Now, in the Skyphojoa, the nidoblast cells present in the epidermis, endodermis and on gastric filaments also. In the Skyphojoa, the germ cells are derived from only endodermis also called the endoderm. What is one example for the Skyphe Skyphojoa? Aurelia. What is the common name of Skyphojoa? The jellyfishes. The last class is Anthojoa. What type of animals come under the anthojoa? Some animals are sea animals. Some animals are corals. In the class anthojoa, mainly what type of symmetry is present by biradial symmetry? It is followed by the radial symmetry. In the class anthojoa, what is the main joid? Only the polyp. Here, due to the presence of polyp, all are sedentary. In the anthojoa, all are marine forms. In the skyphojoa, all are marine forms. In the hydrojoa, 
all our marine except the hydra that lives in the fresh water. Now in the anthozoa, as we observe the mouth, on either side of mouth, the ciliated grooves are present. They are called, the ciliated grooves are called siphonoglyphs. The siphonoglyphs open into a small part called pharynx. It is also called stomodium. That opens into the cilentiron. Here, the cilentiron is divided into compartments by mesenteries. The mesenteries are derived from the endodermis. In the class anthozoa also, the nidoblast cells are present in the epidermis, endodermis. In the class anthozoa also, the germ cells are derived from endoderm or endodermis. In the hydrozoa, the germ cells derived from epidermis. Here the germ cells derived from endodermis. Here the germ cells derived from endodermis. Here the hydra commonly known as freshwater polyp. Here the common name is jellyfishes. Here anthozoa, what is the animals included? One we call it as sea animals and the second one we call it as corals. Now we completed the nidaria. The next one is the platy helminthes. The last one we call it as the platy helminthes. Now, in the phyla, in the kingdom animalia, the second sub kingdom we call it as eumetazoa. In the eumetazoa, what is the second grade? The bilateria. What is the other name of bilateria? The triploblastica. Why it is called bilateria? At all stages, generally bilateral symmetry. Why it is called triploblastica? At all stages, how many germ layers are present? Three germ layers are present. What is the important character of platy helminthes? Absence of coelom that is called a coelometa. In the same way, what is the important character of protozoa? Unicellular nature. What is the important character of porifera? Canal system or aquifera system? What is the important character of nidaria? The presence of cilentiron or the presence of gastrovascular cavity. Here, what is the important character? The acelometa, the coelom totally absent. Now, as we observe the platy element, is, the body is dorsoventrally flat. So, these animals are popularly known as the flatworms. In the phylum platy element, is, as we observe the elementary canal, generally the elementary canal is sac like. Elementary canal has only mouth. The mouth itself acts as anus, but in some examples, the elementary canal also having the anus. If anus also present, it is the complete elementary canal. What is the characteristic cells of platy helminthes? The flame cells. What is the other name of flame cells? The protonephridia. What is the main function of flame cells? Osmoregulation. What is the secondary function? The excretion. In the phylum platy helminthes, what type of nervous system is present? The ladder-like nervous system. Here, these are longitudinal nerve cords connected by transverse nerve cord. It is called ladder-like nervous system. In the phylum platy helminthes, majority are bisexual. Only one animal is unisexual that is called cystosoma. That is the only unisexual male and the female separate. In the phylum platy helminthes, in some animals, we have to observe the polyembryony and parthenogenesis. What is meant by polyembryony? One embryo gives rise to many embryos. What is meant by parthenogenesis? The development without fertilization is called the parthenogenesis. In the phylum platy element is how many classes are present? Three classes are present. What is the first class? The first class we call it as the turbularia. What is the second class? We call it as trematoda. What is the third class? We call it as the cystoda. Now, the first class is called turbal area. In the turbal area, all are free living, no parasites. In the class trematoda, some are ectoparasites and some are endoparasites. Whereas, in the class cystoda, all are endoparasites. Now, in the class turbal area, Moderate cephalization is present. What is meant by cephalization? At the anterior end of the body, 
a distinct head is present here only in the class turbal area at the anterior end the head with sense organs present in the class turbal area the body is covered and protected by the ciliated epidermis in the class turbal area in the body wall what are present the rod like rhabdoids are present what is the function of rhabdoids they secrete mucus that help in the attachment during the course of locomotion only in this class turbal area we have to observe the regeneration the regeneration is brought by what type of cells the neoblast cells now in the class turbal area what is the larva the larva is called the mullar what type of animals come under the turbal area one type of animal we call it as planarians one type of animals we call it as acela what is the second class that is trematoda what is the common name of trematoda that we call it as flukes in the trematoda as we observe the body shape the body shape is leaf like this is anterior end and this is the posterior end the body is covered and protected by tegment at the anterior end mouth is present on the ventral side one ventral sucker present the mouth is surrounded by oral sucker now in this class how many suckers are present two suckers what is the other name of ventral sucker the acetabulum in the class trematoda the elementary canal divides into two branches so it is called digenia in the class trematoda we have to observe parthenogenesis and polyembryony what is the best example the fasciola hepatica in the life history of fasciola hepatica we have to observe what type of larval forms one we call it as mirasidium it is followed by sporocyst it is followed by redia it is followed by cercaria it is followed by metacercaria what is the last class cystoda in the class cystoda all are endoparasites here no elementary canal here the body appears to be tape or ribbon so got the name tapeworms in the class cystoda the parasites present in the intestine of the host so these are called intestinal parasites here the body is covered by syncytial tegument but in the trematoda body covered by only tegument here the body covered by syncytial tegument in the class cystoda what are the body parts the scolex the neck and strobila the strobila is classified into number of proglottids here all are bisexual only in the class cystoda we observe pseudomedomerism what is meant by pseudomedomerism the new segments add from anterior end now in the class cystoda we have to observe a process that we call it as apolysis what is meant by apolysis because of this process from one host to another host embryos transfer and also help for the dispersal of the race in the class cystoda life history what is the first embryo exocant what is the second embryo oncosphere what is the third one the cysti circus cellulose that finally becomes the adult with this protozoa porifera nidaria platy element is over in the next class we have to discuss the nematoda anelida arthropoda